What's up? Welcome into your daily Buckeye Blitz for a Sunday. This is the third time I'm trying to do this video. My computer thought it'd be a perfect time right in the middle of recording this the first two times to reboot and install updates and all that happy shit. This laptop's probably made in Michigan or something. Anyways, Sunday fun day, back again, fall back, get an extra hour. Seems like I should be eating lunch right now. But anyways, it's only 10.35. <laughs> so I am Joe from the Buckeye Cast, as always, bringing it to you. Want to give you a couple programming updates tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern, YouTube Live. Me, Jeff, and Sean will be recapping this Notre Dame game, getting you ready for the Indiana game. And we'll talk about all the mayhem from uh, sun, uh, Saturday night's games. Uh, it was a bad night to be an SEC top-ranked team on the road, huh? <laughs> and also a bad night to be Clemson. But uh, we'll, get, we'll get into that tonight. Today, I'm just going to talk about the Ohio State. Uh, oh, I got acid reflux. Win, Ohio State win 21-7 over Northwestern in what seemed to be a tornado. Uh, which, why was this game such a struggle? The coaches, Ryan Day, everybody knew it was going to be what the conditions were going to be all week long leading up to the game. Seemed like Northwestern had a plan. Run the ball against the wind, throw the ball with the wind. Uh, anyways, let, let's jump into it here. Um, Northwestern, they put up a hell of a fight. Uh with an undersized, under-talented, mediocre at best team, still haven't won on U.S. soil this year. So uh, they dominated this game. They controlled it entirely. Ohio State did not until the fourth quarter. Uh, 36, they had over 36 minutes time of possession. Um, they did get, score once early, but uh, like I said, we we finally got our shit together late in the game. Again, this, this is starting to be a concerning trend for me where we fuck around for two or three quarters and then finally realize, oh, we have other plays in the playbook. And, oh, the defense is, is finally getting us stops. Um, anyways, um, running the ball, huge concern. Took us 35 carries to get to 200 yards. That's pathetic. Um, if it weren't for CJ finally call, getting his number called in the run game, I'm not sure we would have won that game. It, we might still be playing in overtime. Um, and, and the defense, I, I don't know why we're running out mediocre defensive linemen. Um, Larry Johnson needs to be answering some questions. What's going on with this rotation? Why am I not seeing more Michael Hall, Tyleek Williams? You want them to be more consistent. Maybe put them on the field more consistently. Uh, getting very little snaps is not a way uh, to to build a, any kind of uh, consistency or uh, show what somebody's worth. Michael Hall had 12 snaps total. 12 snaps. Uh, Tyleek, 15 but Ty Hamilton gets 25. Why is that? Uh, I don't understand this. Um, and some of this, these run defense grades were pathetic. Um, Cody Simon had 15 snaps. Uh, he graded out a 56. That's terrible. 60 is like average. 60% is doing your job. Uh, like, for example, to compare, Tommy Eichenberg graded a 75. He had 11 tackles um, and 55 total snaps. That's, that's above and beyond doing your job, okay? Um, again, uh, other guys, Zach Harrison graded a 60. I know he had one highlight play, and he played 41 snaps. Uh, Jack Sawyer, 58. He had 24 snaps. Um who else here? These DBs are pathetic in, in run support. Um, Tanner McAllister is a is a missed tackle machine. Uh, J.K. Johnson, Jair Brown, these guys are not even interested in trying to get somebody to the ground. It's really frustrating. Um, and missed tackles, again, we're in double digits. We had 10. Lathan Ransom, three. You're a safety, dude. You're supposed to be the last line of defense. 
You know, Ronnie Hickman, too, two missed tackles. Michael Hall, Denzel Burt, Cody Simon, J.K. Johnson, Tanner McAllister, all with missed tackles. So run defense really has to tighten up. And why are we running out uh, three safeties and loading up a box with only six or seven guys against a, a, a wildcat formation? The running back is going to run the ball in a wildcat formation. Bring freaking nine or ten guys down. Jesus. This, there's coaching issues, player issues across the board. I'm not sure that anybody other – then Tommy Eichenberg, anybody else on the defense is is doing their job. JT had a decent day. Um, it's really frustrating. On the offensive side, run blocking. This is garbage, straight up garbage. Uh, what did um, what did we have here from running the ball? A mecca. Two carries, 21 yards, had the touchdown. Nice, nice play. Uh, CJ, six carries, 79 yards, had the big 44-yarder. Still does not look comfortable keeping the ball and running. Mayan barely gets to 100 yards, 111 on 26 carries. It should not take you 26 carries. Did have the two touchdowns. I know he's not 100%, but um, so it's really, really frustrating to watch. Um, and again, we're, we're throwing deep balls down the field in a, into either with the win or against the win. It didn't matter. They were completely inaccurate and overthrown. Um, obviously the ball is going to sail on you when you're throwing it with the wind. I don't know why bother. Maybe you just run some 15 yard routes. You know, those seem to have some success. Um, this run blocking, I'm going to get back to that right now. Uh, this this O line is pathetic, especially if coming from the guard positions. But look at these grades: um, Matthew Jones of fifty seven, Paris Johnson Jr. fifty seven, Josh Fryer fifty five. They brought in Fryer as an extra O lineman when they wanted to go big and and obviously run the ball. Didn't do a damn bit of good. Uh, Dwan Jones fifty three, Donovan Jackson fifty one. Like I said, sixty is like just average doing your job. This is way below average, and it was obvious on TV. Uh, Luke Whipler did grade a 65. Kate Stover a 66. So these guys are just barely above average. Um, not good enough. Not good enough, especially going against a Northwestern team that has like a 260-pound D tackle. Are you kidding me? You can't fucking move that guy? Jesus Christ. And looking at this drive chart, it's just, you know, punt, punt, punt. Downs, punt, punt, touchdown, end of half. Touchdown, punt, punt, touchdown, downs. That's the drive chart for Ohio State. It's pathetic. Um, I don't know. It, it, we thought it was 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 cool against Notre Dame when we finally uh, ran it down their throats in the fourth quarter, took control of the game, and and closed it out sealed it but this is a not even close to the same talent i don't give a shit about the weather conditions they knew all week what the conditions were going to be and they still laid an egg still did not show up on saturday you got two fucking weeks to fix these problems ryan day uh that michigan game is a career defining game and uh and uh we've seen some coaching careers not work out so well when they lose that game and I don't think you want to lose two in a row. Things will get pretty dicey. Like Earl Bruce used to say, if you beat Michigan, you can walk down high street and strutting your stuff. But if you lose to Michigan, you got to take the back alleys. That's what it is. He wasn't joking. <laughs> so like I mentioned, please join us tonight, YouTube live. I might not have mentioned that because I, this is, like I said, it's the third time doing this. Um, YouTube Live, 8 p.m. Eastern. Join us. Oh, and Tuesday night, we're having a special 8 o'clock to YouTube Live as well. We are interviewing the president and CEO of the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, Gary Roken. He will be joining us, and we'll be grilling him, asking him uh, why chicken nuggets are so expensive or something. I don't know. I'll come up with some good questions, I promise. Anyways, that's all I got for you today. Hope you guys have a good Sunday, and we will talk to you tonight. Go Ups!